Water is our sacred source of life. Before the colonizers came to Hawaii, the Waianae Valley was fertile and brimming with water. Our people cultivated and cared for the land, and they grew taro to eat. But the colonizers diverted the water to feed their sugar plantations. Terrible droughts spread throughout the valley. Our foods couldn't grow or thrive. We forgot how to care for our land. We were taught to be ashamed of the culture of our ancestors, and growing up, I knew almost nothing about the taro. In the 1970s, I was teaching art to local youth and took my students to camp in the mountains behind Waianae Valley. The dirt was dry and filled with trash. Further up the valley, we stumbled upon these terraces. Terrace after terrace after terrace. What were these? We sought out stories from our Hawaiian elders and our taro farmers. Sky Father Vakea and Ho'uhoku Kalani wanted a child. Their first attempt was a stillborn. Ho'uhoku Kalani planted the fetus, and the root grew to become the taro plant. The next child was a fully formed human from which we Hawaiians descended. The taro plant is our eldest sibling. Colonialism didn't just tear us from the food of our ancestors, but from one of our most important cultural practices, taro farming. Bringing taro back to Waianae meant fighting for our water, our land, and our own way of life. We began digging above the terraces. We laid pipe after pipe, redirecting the water from the old abandoned plantation dams. The water flowed down the valley, filling the terraces once again. Without realizing it, we had become the older sibling, just as the taro plant is our older sibling. We were seeds for a new land and water movement. Here is the huli. This part is kept and replanted because, just as you are our next generation, huli is the next generation of taro. Here, planted there. <laughs> 